As fans of Knights of the Old Republic, we don't often associate cuts or missing content with Knights of the Old Republic 1. By all intents and purposes, Knights of the Old Republic 1 feels like a complete game. If we contrast that to the sequel though, well, Knights of the Old Republic 2 is notorious for being somewhat half-baked. And more often than not, when people are discussing the two games, you'll often hear people say they preferred Knights of the Old Republic 1 because Knights of the Old Republic 2 didn't really feel finished in some regard. And that is understandable. KOTOR 2 was missing some important things at release, and a lot of us now forget about it because of the restored content mod. However, I think it is important to note that there was actually some cut content for Knights of the Old Republic 1. But, unlike its sequel, it doesn't negatively impact the experience of the game or take anything away from it. Now, about a year and a half ago, I made a video similar to this one called The Cut KOTOR Ending You Likely Didn't Know About. If you haven't seen that one, you should definitely go and check it out. And while there are definitely some of you that will absolutely know what I'm going to be talking about in today's video, there are without a doubt going to be some of you that don't. And that is the entire planet from Knights of the Old Republic 1 that was cut from the final release. Not only was this planet advertised before the game came out, with a number of screenshots of it appearing in media articles and whatnot for the game's marketing, but its music is still in the game and just reapplied to other areas. And it's also teased very early on, just before you find the very first star map. If you guys remember when you enter the ancient ruins on Dantooine, the ancient droid essentially tells you to pass the challenges left behind by the builders, and that will determine if you are worthy of going further into the ruins to discover its secrets. There are then doors that lead to the left and the right of you, and at the end of these challenge areas are terminals, and you have to answer three questions to pass. Name the three life-giving planets, and name the three death-giving planets. You will then be given the options of grassland, oceanic, arboreal, desert, barren, and volcanic. Now, something that some of you may have missed is that each one of these adjective descriptions is directly linked to every single planet in the game that you will explore, besides the final planet and Taris. For example, Dantooine is grassland, oceanic is Manan, arboreal is Kashyyyk, desert is Tatooine, and barren is Korriban. But there definitely seems to be one missing here because I don't remember exploring a volcanic planet in the game. Now, could the Rakatans have made a mistake on their terminals? No. The volcanic planet that we should have explored was cut from Knights of the Old Republic, and this planet was called Slaheron. In fact, this planet is mentioned a few times in the game by Yuthora Ban directly, because this is her homeworld, this is where she comes from, and if you talk with her enough about her past, she will mention Slaheron and give you a brief description about its history and whatnot. Also, Slaheron is mentioned in Knights of the Old Republic 2 as well. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about exactly what you were going to be doing on Slaheron, the questline, what it looked like, and the music that was repurposed for other parts of the game. But before we get into that, I want to give you guys a quick rundown of its history and the lore of the planet. Now, Slaheron was a planet within Hut control, and within the lore of Star Wars, it was widely considered to be second only to Nar Shaddaa in terms of its economic importance to the Huts. And while Slaheron was often used for the refinement of Tibana gas for the fuel of starships, its core economic pillar was the slave trade. As mentioned by Euthora, she was sold into this slave trade at a young age, and that is the unfortunate fate of a lot of Twi'leks in the Star Wars universe. And she was tortured regularly by her slaver, and she kind of snapped and ended up killing him in his bedchamber while he slept. Ironic. It's not, but I just wanted to make that joke. Fortunately, we do kind of know what we were going to be doing on Slaheron and what the overall idea was for the planet's questline that we would have undertaken. And this is because one of the designers of the game, James Olin, stated this. Having to cut this world was particularly painful, but it was simply a time thing. 
it was a gladiatorial world where the player was going through sort of a Planet Hulk style plot. The player would get stuck fighting their way up through the ranks until they won the tournament and escaped off world. But that was too much to do in the time we had so it got cut. Now, as most of us know, there was kind of a gladiator-inspired side quest that you could do on Taris. I wonder if they transferred the idea from Slaheron's planetary quest and put it into a smaller quest line so they at least had it in the game. But that is total conjecture. However, I do think this would have been pretty cool. There was a lot of fun moments in the fighting ring on Taris, and I think they could have done something really entertaining on a grand scale if they were given the chance, so it's a shame to see that it was cut. Slaheron also plays a small but kind of pivotal role in the lore of Knights of the Old Republic 2 as well. If you remember the notorious fuel line quest on Telos, which to my knowledge in the base game is incompletable, you'll remember that Telos loses its fuel supply from Paragus, so the Jedi Exile is tasked with finding new fuel. You end up convincing Voga the Hutt on Narshadar to supply the fuel for Telos, and this comes directly from Slaheron. Now, in regards to the music, you will have undoubtedly heard at least one of the tracks that was created for Slaheron. Have a little listen and see if you recognise either of them. So this track is a little bit more obscure, and that is because it only plays in one of the side quests, and that's the one with the Rakatan Mind Prison. Based on its original file name, Muse Area Slahay, we can assume that it was actually supposed to be ambient music for Slaheron. As for this track, well, I'm pretty sure all of you have heard it, and that is because it is the Starforge battle music. You would have heard this towards the end of the game, however, it was originally titled Muse Bat Slahay, implying that it was actually supposed to be battle music for Slaheron. Now there was at one point an entire project dedicated to bringing back Slaheron as a mod. This was called the Slaheron Restoration Project, I believe, and it seems that there's only one person working on it and they're doing it in their spare time, and the last update we had from them was in 2022. It seems they've been working on this mod for many, many years, so hopefully one day we might just get around to seeing Slaheron in the game. Also, because I know that some of you are going to be saying in the comments that you want to see Slaheron in the KOTOR remake, I'm going to have to be the bearer of some bad news, at least based on the things that I was told a year ago. And that is, they weren't planning to add anything significant to the game that wasn't already in the original. Which unfortunately means things like Slaheron or New Companions weren't going to be in it. But now the game is no longer at Aspire and a new studio are working on it, never say never. Anyway, my question for you guys today is this. Would you have preferred Slaheron be in the game or Yathora Ban as a companion? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, it helps me out a great deal. And if you haven't, perhaps consider subscribing to join the biggest growing Knights of the Old Republic community on YouTube. I'll see you guys in the next video. But until then, may the Force be with you. Always.